Moria lies in ruins. It was a temporary home for over 12,000 migrants stuck on the Greek island of Lesbos. Human rights groups had long deplored conditions in the overcrowded camp, which was operating at four times its intended capacity. Now politicians from around Europe are calling on the bloc's members to take action. These are horrible pictures that we see in what has happened in Moria. I think it is important now that we don't leave Greece alone with this. Today we have already offered the Greek government every support we can. The most important right now is to protect people and to give them immediate shelter. Uh, thanks to quick reaction from the staff in the camp and from the Greek police and fire brigade, we had no casualties and no people in hospital. And uh, of course now the focus is to give shelter for all these people tonight. The fire was sparked overnight. Several shacks went up in flames around the camp before the entire compound began to burn. Winds reaching up to 70 kilometers per hour fanned the flames, forcing thousands to flee. Me, how is this finish? As far as many, uh, all finish. The inhabitants headed to nearby hills and woods. Others began walking to the island's capital, Mytilene. Ride police were deployed along the roads amid fears that the camp's residents might spread the coronavirus across the island. Last week, Mori was placed under lockdown after 35 cases were detected in the camp. As day broke, some residents returned to search for belongings among the remains. The fire has been put out, but over 12,000 migrants could now be homeless. Once more in their lives, they have nowhere to go. What's next for Moria is a question many have been posing for years. An answer from authorities has now become ever more urgent. Here in Germany, pro-refugee groups have called for nationwide protests in support of the refugees from the Moria camp. In Berlin, at least 3,000 people joined the spontaneous demonstration which saw activists march through the city's government district. Activists say several German states would be willing to offer shelter to some of the refugees from Moria. However, the German federal government has so far refused to accept any of the migrants. Well, joining us now is Salam al-Din. He's based in here in Berlin and organizes the NGO in Moria called Team Humanity. His colleagues were on the ground there when the fire broke out. Mr. al-Din, you work with the people who were in the Moria camp. What's their situation now? How are they doing? So um, all of the refugees are on the streets. And uh, we have a community center like 150 meters away from Moria camp. And we have around... 500 to 800 people in our center and outside our center. Most of the refugees went to Mytilene, but they were blocked by the police. So they are sheltering outside on the streets without blankets, without tents, without anything, without even food or water. This is the situation right now, this morning. 12,000 people, the 12,000 people sheltering there in Moria are now homeless. So what's going to happen to them? What are the plans? As I see it, the Greek government doesn't have a plan and they need help from the whole Europe. Uh, they didn't have a plan a few years ago. We had many fires before and we told them, look, this will happen. And nothing happened. They didn't even have an evacuation plan. When the fire started, there was no governmental people. There were no police. There was not, nobody there to help them. So it was only the NGOs that was actually going inside while the fire was there and taking the refugees out. So there was no evacuation plan. So they don't have a plan and still they don't have, they don't know what they're gonna do. The last thing I heard, they wanna put them in a military camp. This is the same thing, you're putting them in another camp. This is not a solution. Hmm. The German foreign minister and other politicians in Europe say they will put Moria high on their political agenda. What do you think that will translate into? What sort of action would you like to see? I would like to see that Europe take responsibility and they will start taking families at least first out from that hell they've been living in for many years. Each country can take thousands of refugees and give them a home. 
You know, these refugees are uh, like me and you. You know, they're humans. They deserve a, a safe place to be. They deserve to be treated like humans. And the Greek government doesn't do that. And Europe must act right now. The solution is not putting them in another camp. You're just moving the problem to another place. With regard that's, to that's for us. with regard to the fire itself, uh, the Greek authorities say that some of the migrants themselves may have started it. Uh, why do you think they might do that? You've been living in a in a camp, in a refugee camp for so long time, and when you hear that they will shut it down because they said that they will close it and make it like a jail, people are getting crazy. And you have all kinds of people there. You know, we cannot judge everyone. You have families with children who doesn't even know what happened. So you have some people that started the fire, and then you have 12,000 people running. They don't even know why they're running. They don't even know nothing. So, of course, people are frustrated. People are tired. People have been living in these conditions. Imagine you're living in a, in, a, in a summer tent in the winter with your children, without a heat or without anything. And the government, they know that they got the money from the European Union, but they never used it on the refugees, and the money gone. And no one has responsibility for that. A desperate situation there, indeed. Uh, Salam al -Din, thank you very much for talking with us this morning. Salam al -Din is the uh, organizer of the NGO Team Humanity in Moria. Thank you. And for more now, I'm joined by Eric Markvart. He is a member of the Greens and a member of the European Parliament. Mr. Markvart, it's good to have you on the program. You've been to Moria before. You've seen firsthand the deplorable conditions there. Did you think that a disaster like this fire was inevitable? Was it just a matter of time? I actually did not only think that this kind of catastrophe will happen. I already said it in interviews in March. Many humanitarian organizations said that the situation we have there is a big problem and that this kind of catastrophe can happen every time. So we did not know how this catastrophe will happen, but that it was just a question of time when something like this happens it was very clear. Who do you blame for the conditions that allowed this disaster? I think it's a difficult question, actually. So, of course, you can say, OK, there are people who um, try to put some fires in the camp. Um, and uh, in the end, they are responsible. You can say that yeah? they are responsible for setting the camp on fire. But as a politician and as a member of the European Parliament who followed the political debates about the European asylum system and the conditions at the external borders for quite a long time, I must say that I'm not very interested in doing the police work now and seeing who did the fire. I'm interested in talking about a situation where European member states, the governments, where also, we in the European Parliament were not able to react to the situation, to this catastrophe. And I think in the end, it's a political disaster and we should feel ashamed for that. I mean, this, doesn't this expose one of the European Union's greatest failures? I mean, this is what happens when some members of the EU refuse to take in migrants and leave other members, such as Greece, to deal with the reality on the ground. Do you agree? I would say that it's not only a few member states who did not relocate people from Greece, from the Greek islands especially, it's all of them. So there were some member states who said, okay, we take some unaccompanied minors, but in the end, we cannot say, okay, we have um, no unified position on our asylum policy for quite a long time. For four years, the European member states do not find a position. The European Commission has a position, the European Parliament has a position, and the European member states are not able to find a unified position. And they are also not able to see that when you have conditions there where there is not enough water, where there is no education for the children, where there is no fire protection system, that a catastrophe will happen and that somebody <clears throat> has to react. So it's a like responsibility not from the European Union and the others. It's the responsibility for everybody who has a possibility to help. Mr. Marquardt, do you know who is going to take responsibility for these migrants now? 
what I heard from today is um, pretty shocking, actually. So yesterday at night, I received some photos from Moria. I have some friends there who live there. And um, I said, OK, it's another fire. A few minutes later, I received some other videos and said, OK, that's a like, bigger fire. And in the end, it was clear that almost the whole camp was burning and that we have uh, 13,000 homeless people there who lost everything. And the situation is that they just have no, they have not even have a tent to sleep. They have nothing left. And mm -hmm. also one day later, um, it seems that they have the second uh, night just without anything. Um, I, I, I feel really ashamed as a politician mm -hmm. that I cannot do something. But if I would be in the German government, I would take immediate action to, to help these people make uh, humanitarian aid there, care of Corona, but also relocate the people to Germany because there are enough region, cities, and also Bundesländer who want to well, that, um, let me pick up welcome on that, these people. Mr. Marquardt, earlier this week, 13,000 chairs were placed in front of the German parliament building to symbolize the 13,000 people living in the camp that just went up in flames. I mean, you were involved with that demonstration. Having to wear face masks has brought thousands of protesters here to Berlin recently. Will homeless, burned out refugees in Greece, will they get more attention than just a bunch of empty chairs? So I come directly from a demonstration um, and the demonstration was five to 10,000 people uh, who were just shocked by this, not accident, but disaster and the pictures they saw. And five to 10,000 people with no mobilization for one day and also in different countries and uh, cities in Germany where demonstration. So I, I think that we should understand that there are lots of people who would be very proud when they can use their possibilities to help people in need. And I think that the situation where we hear so much from the far right, where we hear almost every time when we talk about migration, about the problems mm. of migration, but where we have a huge amount of people and possibilities to help these poor people. And I, I think in like general, I, I don't care about people like doing demonstration for face masks, but I care about the dignity of people, about human rights. And I think that they are the basis of our societies, and okay. I think that many people are not against the uh, relocation of these people, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see if there is um, any type of public action now that this camp has been destroyed. Eric Marquardt, a member of the European uh, Parliament. Mr. Marquardt, we appreciate your time and your thoughts tonight. Thank you. Thank you.